The Cider Museum was set up as a trust in 1972. There were three key players, Norman Weston, Bertram Bulmer and John Hudson from the Long Ashton Research Station. And they realised that uh, the old traditional stories about cider were disappearing and if they didn't capture them soon they might be lost. We see ourselves as a repository for the national story. The very best way though to really find out about the rich stories about cider is to come inside. This is the museum's unique collection of 18th century cider glasses. This is how you would drink cider in the 18th century. So it's a very fine quality product. It's more like a fine wine. This is a drink for the gentry. So we move into the 19th century and you're getting the farmhouse cider going out into the fields in the Costrel or Firkin if you're in Somerset. You'd have your couple of gallons of cider, you'd go out, you'd bring in the harvest, you'd um, share it with horn cups and this would be part of your wages, so you get paid in cider. And that was true for women and children as well. And then the last one is just a great contrast. So you've got the very fine 18th century glass, you've got the 19th century mug, often two-handled. So you drink this and then you get to the end and then you'd have the frog at the bottom, which would spit cider at you. So it's just how people enjoyed um, the drink of their time. We've got a very humble object here. It's a unique item, but the story behind it's fantastic. We're standing in the boardroom of the old Bournemouth factory. The museum's not just about the objects and the stories, it's also the building itself. The Bournemouth brothers bought 10 acres of land at Ryland Street in 1889 and started to build their shack, as they called it, and they worked incredibly hard. They had a mother at Creddon Hill and the rectory at Creddon Hill who used to make them food, make a casserole, put it on the train at Creddon Hill and it would come all the way here to the Barton and sidings. They would eat the casserole, they would fall down and sleep in their clothes because they were so exhausted and this is how the Bournemouth Empire started. It went from two brothers working their absolute socks off with a mother's home cooking to sustain them uh, to the biggest cider company in the world. This lovely object is a little bit of an enigma. This comes from Mocker's Court, which was the home of one of the MPs who campaigned against the hated tax. It was so hated that the poor customs and excise man had a really dreadful time. So this is a cartoon from the time. So we've got a customs and excise person being hung. We've got a boot referring to Lord Boot or Lord Butte. And they had such a bad time that in the Forest of Dean, they actually threw one of the customs and excise men into a mine and kept him there and imprisoned him. So there were mock funeral processions up and down the country when this thing happened. And then when it was all over, there were ballads, there were celebrations. So cider was free of being taxed for home production, still taxed in other ways. So we're standing in the champagne cider cellars at the museum. We've got 10,000 bottles here. This is the direct result of Percy Bulmer going to France, finding out how they made champagne, coming back and applying it to cider. So in the early 1900s, they're rediscovering something that their 17th century forebears knew, but had forgotten all those years. This is late 17th century. It was partly the invention of a courtier called Sir Ken Elm Digby. He was very interested in finding out how you could make glass with a coal furnace. So suddenly, Britain led the way in producing this very, very heavy and very robust glass. This type of bottle is really why we can have champagne. Because it was so robust, they could actually do secondary fermentation. And we do know that in the 17th century, cider makers were doing this. They were putting a walnut of sugar into the cider and they were having it evanesce. And so we invented champagne, apparently. If you're a cider maker or you've been involved somehow with the story of cider from orchards right the way through, think about have you got things that you want us to capture? Have you got objects that you think we ought to have or stories that we, you need to tell us? Mm -hmm.